Welcome to Leadership Adelix Season 2 Part 2. I'm Sebastian Fouillade. Join me every week to explore the intersection between deep spiritual experiences and leadership. Leadership in the sense of how do you manifest a better future for yourself, for your family, for your community and for others. So join me every week as I interview guests who've had those those hardships, those, those journeys, those heroes' journeys, and they share the insights that they've gained along the way. Insights meant to inspire us, meant to awaken us, meant to help us build a better future. I've got a very special announcement. We're organizing a sacred creativity retreat in October of this year in the Sacred Valley of Peru. Now, what's a sacred creativity retreat? Well, it's all about reconnecting you with your untainted, authentic, creative selves. So if you're interested, check out the website retreat.fouyad.com. That's retreat.fouyad.com for more information. And uh, I hope the stars align and, and I can see some of you there. In this episode, I meet with Emily Berens. Emily is a customer experience leader and career coach obsessed with putting humans at the heart of everything. Her journey to overcome trauma and burnout has reconnected her with her magic, her emotions, her humanity. This has redefined how she approaches her work and helps others through her coaching. We talk about breaking from the rules, overcoming burnout and trauma, and the tools she used along the way, from EMDR therapy to yoga to Cambo and microdosing. Emily's energy is infectious. You can feel her love for life and the creativity she brings. She's a true maverick who helps others through her creativity, showing up as she is, as her whole self. Enjoy. Emily, thank you for uh, being with us on Leadership Adelix. Thank you for inviting me in the show. Thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure. And uh, I really enjoyed connecting with you because it, it was fun to kind of learn about your background, your experience, and, and seeing some of the overlaps in our journey uh, as well. It's, it's really nice, uh, especially when you, you talk about uh, customer experience and human experience. Um, that really got me excited because, you know, one of, one of the reasons for starting the show uh, was to to talk about maybe how psychedelics have influenced people in in their work and 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 what they do, uh, kind of like Steve Jobs and you know bringing us the the iPhone and and you know such technological wonder. Of course, it was a team effort, but uh, you know the the whole society benefits uh, from from some of those experiences. So uh, so first, where where are you calling from? I'm currently sitting now in Brussels, where I live in, in, in my office. <laughs> well, that's that's nice. And and have you always been at at a home office? It's like, or is it like a, a product of COVID? No, it's not actually a product of that. Uh, I was before uh, one of the few. <laughs> I was. Oh, it's been uh, actually five years or something that I'm uh, sitting home, uh, working as a consultant for, you know, but it, it has been a little bit with me, a remote job uh, since the beginning of my career when it was only experiment in digital agencies. I was already the mm. guinea pig of, uh, <laughs> to, <laughs> hey, let's try to see uh, how we can, you know, collaborate with people who are in other, another country just with the internet. That was a journey. Yeah, <laughs> can we do? yeah no, I, I bet. It, yeah, it's, it, how do you... How do you like it? Uh, I mean, you, you, you obviously can work with it, but it, it's like, it's interesting. Like we, we spend so much time now in front of the screen and it's like, how do you work with that and make space for the humanity inside of you? Yeah, uh, actually, I like that. I like that because uh, I find a balance with the people I collaborate between seeing I don't know. I find a balance. Uh, I, I'm very extrovert, but also introvert. I'm kind of two. It depends the, the moment of the day. It depends what I have to achieve <laughs> during the day or what I've achieved already. Um, but the way, the, the methods I developed throughout the years to collaborate with people online made it super okay, actually. I can create a, a, a real connection with people thanks to a camera, thanks to a microphone, uh, I think it will never replace a meeting in real for sure. And I do meet people in real uh, more than more than once in a collaboration for yeah. sure. We have <laughs> routines 
to uh, actually create the deeper connection that is required to make it nice. But on a day-to-day basis, it's more than enough. And uh, yeah, I guess I developed a sort of a remote uh, digital intelligence or something. <laughs> oh, that's that's wonderful. Uh, and I, I can't stop like staring behind you. You've got this this uh, bibliotech, this yeah. bookshelf of, uh, of, of all those all those books of knowledge. Like, is there is there like a favorite one you have in there? Kind of like your your. If oh I had to God. get rid of this entire bookshelf and say you can only take one, like. <laughs> oh my God, that will take time to t- make the decision because I have that weird habit that I, I got a book and I just, I'm attached to that object because it yeah. means I, I, it's connected to my learnings there. And uh, uh, yeah, it will take some time if I have to pick on the one. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Don't make me do that. <laughs> I see there's a, is it life 2.0 on the top there or 3.0? Yeah, I, uh, life 3.0, but that's uh, actually, that's not one of my favorites because I don't uh, share the vision of that, but, uh, <laughs> I'm more into, um, psychology. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, you know, here I see one that is, I read more than once nudge. That was a good oh, one. Nudge, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And all that kind of books is always more than welcome in my uh, in my life because uh, I learn about people, and that's 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 the journey I'm on. Uh, since yeah. I started to work in digital, it's the thing. I, okay, but how did that work? Because we were working with people, for people, creating for people, serving people. So people are everywhere. But how do do yeah. how do people work like inside yeah. emotionally in their brain everything? I'm fascinated by that. So that's no, currently yeah, the, years that I read about yeah. that. <laughs> that's amazing. So so tell us about what you're working on right now. Like what are the different projects you're you're involved with? Okay, so I have the um, I have two lives for the moment. <laughs> <I've> got, <laughs> I'm a consultant, uh, a CX customer experience consultant, and I do uh, work with brands to develop their customer experience around projects, brands or products or whatever. And now I'm working for electrical cars. Uh, yes, that's what I do on the consulting side. Wow. And uh, on uh, my other life, which is a coaching life, it's something that I, that I started to develop in 2017. And now I'm really serious about developing it, meaning I'm really out there. I dare to you call are. myself a coach and everything. And uh, yeah, that's a one-to-one coaching, group coaching uh, for uh, mostly women, but not only Um you know, to to dare to take action, to build their project, to build freedom, build everything around uh, their project and uh, the life they would like to dream. And uh, yeah. most of these people are coming from CX, uh, this from CX, you know, uh, industry. Let's say call it this way, because I see that we all have that thing in common that we are convinced we can change the world with these methods, and that ambition. Yeah is so inspiring for me and i'm very happy to help these people uh, every day with the coaching so uh, i feel like yeah. we are moving the needle changing the world yes that's beautiful and i and i checked out your your instagram and i follow your posts on linkedin and and you really show up in a in a in a very uh, nice, honest, uh, joyful way, uh, and it, it's very refreshing. Uh, so you know, I, I think everybody should should you know connect connect with you and 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 get that that good energy and uh, and yeah, definitely there's there's a voice for women as well. Um, I loved your your reflection for for your birthday. It's <laughs> like hey, you know, I haven't yeah. necessarily accomplished all those other things that you know. Are, are on a lot of people's list, but I've accomplished a lot of other things, or I've got all those other things. And uh, I'm probably not paraphrasing it uh, properly, but I was like, you know, it's like refreshing. And it's, mm. you know, it's it's uh, honesty that, that I like to see. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, how much, so how much of, of uh, a spiritual journey has this um, work you've been doing uh, been like, uh, w- was it always like, I-, I feel like there's a little bit 
of a spiritual side to your work. And I'm just curious if it's always been there or if there, there was something that kind of brought it there. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I'm, I'm outing this side of me for a few months only, uh, but I've been cultivating um, this side of myself for a while now because um, that's part of my healing journey. I have PTSD. I discovered that very late compared to the the, the, the event. And so my journey was not very uh, joyful the whole time, not easy to go through. Uh, I went through some very, uh, so, some, yeah, I, I know what despair is. And, um, and yeah, at one point through that journey, I discovered uh, actually that what I call magic, which is my spirituality. Uh, the, the fact that I unbuilt that wall that I put between my person at work and my actual person, <laughs> you know, I built a wall there to protect me of, uh, you know, that's all yeah. I'm sorry. And unbuilding that wall step by step showed me that everything is more powerful when it's a whole. And so I'm together. now, yeah, when it's all together. And now I'm, I'm getting more out there with this side of myself. And I was scared at first. I'm like, my God, people are going to say that I'm crazy or something. But actually, people got very curious. Like, huh. And I feel like for, for a lot of them, it's not that they are, they are, it's not like they connect on everything I say, but they are curious, like, hey, there is something there. And that resonates with me. I don't know why. I don't know how. Or, but we are all yeah. creature of magic. And uh, they feel that. <laughs> so I'm happy yeah. to at least spark something. Yeah. What, why do you think you build that wall? Like, because I, I built the same wall. Like ah, when, so when I know. was going through my corporate career, I basically had one personality at work where I was wearing dark clothes and I was very serious. And, and then I, I came home and I had another personality where, you know, like I was a family man or, you know, I'd like to draw and, you know, just, just go in nature. And, and, uh, and my, my first manager at Microsoft back in 2008, she was like, Oh no, you got to keep those separated. You know, like it's really important. I was like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. And, and eventually I, it came to a head. So I'm really curious, like in, in your life, like what, what do you think kind of created that, that, that wall between the two? Like for me, I, I think it's probably the way I, I saw my parents and how they worked and kind of just got into that mindset of corporate is rigid. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It, it, I, I see, a, I see the thing like you, the way I grew up, uh, the example around, I had around myself were all, uh, set in rules, set in stones. I've been told that if I want to be this, I need to do that. If uh, uh, a girl do this and not that a woman should be uh, behaving this way and not there it's only about rules 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 it was all the time and i was actually a, a good student you know I, yeah. I, I wanted to please the teacher and say okay you know i'm gonna i'm gonna fit i'm gonna fit don't worry i'm gonna fit i'm gonna make what it takes to to get there and to even if i hated some you know i studied business i hated every minute of it <laughs> it was a nightmare i was mentally super super down during the whole five years it lasted uh but because it was for me the only way to get that degree for the life i wanted to have so don't ask me exactly the life i wanted to have what was that for me i knew i wanted freedom actually but for me it was like be a businesswoman oh my god um <laughs> Yeah, so I was walking that path uh, with all the rules on my back. Say, okay, I need to do this now, and now I need to do this and that and this and that, and and, and listening to every voice around me and, and just yeah. executing. So yeah, the wall was there because uh, the the person, yeah, the the rebel who hates authority, who hates the rules, the the person who, who wants to break every rule. All this person was also living inside me, but uh, I don't know. I lost her for a while. <laughs> How did how did that come to a head? Like what was it like was there was there an event like you were like, Oh my god, I I gotta change this? Like it, 
I don't, I don't know. I don't, I've, I could have some guesses. I mean, I was looking at your background, you did some yoga, we've talked psychedelics as well. Like I'm, I'm curious, like was, was there something that helped you break that wall? Oh yeah. My body and my mind decided <laughs> together to break down. Uh, it was, uh, it, I was 30. I'm 38 today. Uh, I was 30. I was in a miserable position, miserable position. Uh, I was working my ass off. I was unhappy. I was in a, surrounded by overwhelming and toxicity. Everything was wrong uh, in my professional life. Uh, not everything was right in my <laughs> personal life. So I made a major burnout. And, and uh, at one point I, I collapsed. And when I faced that, it was first a, uh, I felt like it was a huge betrayal uh, from my body and my mind. I was like, seriously, I've done everything. I followed all the rules. And now this is the end. Seriously, that's what I was fighting for. I, I, it was completely unfair, in my opinion. Mm. And I was lucky enough to meet the right doctor at that point that uh, forced me to to stop and do nothing but being with myself and take the time. Yeah. You know, his only prescription at that moment was, okay, every day you're going to wake up, make a body scan, and then go out there and walk. Walk with your nose up there and you look, you look around you and you do that every day, every day, every day, every day. And that's how oh, that's it started. An amazing, yeah. That's an amazing doctor. Yeah, uh, really. That's, that's great advice. Uh, was that, was that hard at the beginning? Like, did, did you feel antsy or that, you know, like, or was it just really natural? <laughs> I, I was not seeing any point of this. I was uh, I was feeling terrible because I, I was like, oh, my God, but I, I have so much to do. My career just started. Uh, I'm losing my time here. How can I get better? But as I was a good student and doing everything I've been told to do, <laughs> I said, OK, so I'm going to try the doctor thing, you know. And, and uh, at one point, I felt, yeah. Uh, at one point, I fell alone, so I, I, I get some friends with me to make the walk. Uh, then I got bored because I guess I, I was feeling better, so I started to run. Uh, you know, it was, um, but I was actually starting my self care journey because uh, I didn't yeah. take care any any care of myself for years before. Well, for, for the, I started self care at thirty. <laughs> That's uh, what it is, actually. Wow. Um... You know, if, <laughs> there's so much burnout happening right now um, at, at, at corporations, especially with COVID. I think it, it's blurred a lot of lines for people and it's made it really hard um, for them to even make, make that space for themselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like uh, that journey, I think it's, you know, if, if anybody listening takes anything from, from our conversation, that's that's a really big point. Like, you know, make space for yourself go out you know like that's that's really good advice take that walk do nothing mm -mm. um you know I've, I have so many friends that are still in corporate and and i chat with them and they're like no everybody's completely burned out you know and 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 it's hard it's like you can see it from the outside um they're they're struggling so you know i'm assuming part of your coaching work too is is helping people uh through that as well um, yeah, I think, yeah, I'm, uh, I make everything I can to give them the tools to connect with themselves because uh, that's, that's the best gift I, I give myself throughout the years. Uh, they are a, the healing through, um, through that burnout, uh, which was enhanced by the PTSD with, and then starting, I mean, it's been eight years and I still learn stuff today about myself thanks to that breakdown so uh because actually i started then to feel better the moment i started to feel better is the moment i started to connect with myself uh, either with my body or with my emotions or connection with myself in any sort and through coaching yeah that's what i i, I want to offer different point of views i want to propose different alternatives so different stories for themselves so they can connect with themselves the part of themselves that they might have lost somewhere somehow on the mm. on the way mm. 
Beautiful. So, so when did you, after you started walking around in nature and looking around and starting to reconnect with yourself, at, at which point, like, were you magical or spiritual then? Like, were you seeing yourself? Like, I guess we're always magical and spiritual. It's a matter of reconnecting with that. But were you, were you seeing yourself as magical and spiritual then? Or did, did this, was this something that you evolved into with, with other practices? And no, it took some time before I, I can see and feel the magic, actually, because uh, after three months, I had to go back to work for money uh, purposes. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it's like I was, uh, yeah, I had to wor work and I was definitely not out of that burnout, but I had to find, a, a, you know, I started to work again because it was needed. Uh, so I think it took me more time than if I had, I don't know, uh, six months uh, paid off for me. I, I mean, I think my recovery was quite long. But uh, then um, I had a, a, an event. We had Brussels attack uh, here um, mm. with bombing and stuff, but, uh, mm. a nightmare. And I was somehow linked to this because uh, I was not in the, uh, the major attack, but I was a side a side victim, let's say like that. So I've been, I got the support uh, of the psychology unit uh, as a victim, and I've been offered uh, EMDR uh, sessions to get out of the the trauma this event would 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 bring to me. So it's yeah. eye movement desensibilization, re, and I always I always forget about the whole simplification of the letter but it's actually a, uh, with the eye movement you help the brain you help the emotions you help the your system to rationalize event and to actually connect again with your emotions and uh, take a step back and understand better what's happening in your body so I'm not sure I'm having the best description for EMDR but it, that's where I actually discovered that magic could happen because it was crazy how the the reconfiguration of my thoughts about one thing could help me to go through trauma that's where i actually uh that the therapist told me okay but you got something deeper there not after five sessions but after a while so and so that's where we discovered the ptsd and that's through the whole work around this but i started to discover how magical it can be to be connected uh, with your real emotion and also to be able to see yourself as, a, you know, the, the whole picture of yourself, the bright side, yeah. the dark side. And, 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 and that's where I discovered, uh, yeah, magic, I would say. Magic. At, at which point did you start changing how you think about your work and your role? based on like what you were learning about yourself like you know was the was the humanity in your work always the same or did it evolve kind of at the same time as you were evolving everything evolved at the same i mean it's <sighs> like I, I changed my my goggles throughout times so i was trying something you said oh no okay that does not work in this one uh, yeah uh, it sounds interesting and with with this one uh the bundle how does that work and uh, I tried ideas. I tried ideas. I tried uh, attitude. I tried um, some mindset. You know, it's like I was in a shoe shop <laughs> and trying <laughs> shoes and see which one was feeling the best, which one I was yeah. feeling comfortable to step with uh, and to do some, some distance with it. And then I could change again. And, and uh, until I feel very comfortable because I found my shoes. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's what it's closer to what I feel about how the, the, the mind work I've done throughout that. But it was also a, a body work because uh, at yeah. one point I, start, you know, I, I mentioned that I was running. I did that for a while. Um, yeah. I started to be sportive. I, I really, I did all kind of sports just to try out. I ended up doing yoga. Yeah. And uh, now it's been f over five years that I stick with it. Went through the whole uh, uh, yoga teacher training just 
for my myself, not not for, with the ambition of becoming a, a teacher, but yeah. because I'm really hooked. That's a big on deal. This. Yeah, yeah, I'm really hooked on this, <laughs> and that was actually the body work I needed to uh, to balance with therapy and the mindset work I was uh, I was doing for years already. Yeah, when you when you went through yoga teacher training, so I, I did this eleven years ago. I'm assuming there was also a big part of it that was around meditation as well, or was it was it simply like what was the focus of the training in general? Like, how, was it just the poses or? No, they were uh, they were different. So the one that the the, the thing that really um, that really uh, sticked with me um, that was the discovery of all the body and uh, all the inside of the body, the, the mechanical oh. body. So I had yeah. all um, that. That was fascinating. I, I learned so many, yeah. so many things. L- L- anatomy. Were... Yes, anatomy. <laughs> Thank you. So this one was a fascination for us. I was like, oh, my God, this is a, it is a beautiful machine. Um, yeah. We had as well a lot of work, uh, breath work uh, as well, which was very, very interesting uh and also all did you, the did you have any did you have any breakthroughs in the breath work like what uh because the breath breath work is when i had my first out of body experience through yoga in in yoga teacher training so i'm curious how your breath work uh played out and if you learned anything from it like or i'm sure you learned something from it <laughs> but like what what you got out of it I learned that there was so much I didn't know about that. (laughs) I I, I kind of measured all the things that I didn't know about it. I I still feel like a huge beginner in this because uh, I'm kind of, uh, I think I'm a little bit not scared because it's not the right word, but impressed and... um, And yes, uh, I'm not there yet. I think... Uh, I would. I'm a little bit scared. Let's use that word uh, of what of where my body alone could bring me. I'm not scared to go for psychedelic and to uh, to take any you know that drugs that would bring me into a uh, alternate uh, alternative uh, mindset uh, of state of consciousness. But knowing that my body can do that is still a little bit scary for me weird huh <laughs> yeah well uh yeah it, it's well the breath work it's interesting is it's a lot harder for me to get also to the states with breath work mm-hmm. than it is with psychedelics <laughs> yeah i can imagine <laughs> uh i mean it, it takes like you know when i had my out-of-body experience it was af- after two hours of breath work uh, intense, nonstop, eyes closed. Where we're doing, where we're doing and it's like I'm, I'm doing it on the camera. So here, you move your arms up and down, and the teacher controls your, your breath. And uh, you know, with psychedelics, it, it's, it's not two hours of breath work. It's, it's a lot of preparation, and it's different. I guess it's a different flow. Uh, the, the, the work is focused differently. But I, I can understand, I can understand that. Now, you, you did bring. Uh, psychedelics in the picture uh do, do, do you as part of that that growth and that journey like when did you cross path with, with psychedelics um uh, uh end of 2019 i've been called i felt it in my body deep down that uh i wanted to do uh ayahuasca so it's been a while already that I was looking for it, uh, reading, yeah. finding the great person, the one person I wanted to do with. Um, my researchers were there. I was decided it was it was the moment. So uh, it was in 2019 that I decided, um, booked my thing. I was supposed to go in Nepal. I said was supposed because the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the travel, the... Um, the travel was foreseen for April 2020, so it never yeah. happened, of course. Yeah. Uh, I was preparing myself for uh, one of the first things I, I, I stopped in 2020, the 1st of January, was drinking alcohol and stopped a whole lot of stuff just to prepare my body to go through that journey uh, as a good student, because I've been told uh, what I should do to that. And 
And uh, yeah, three months of preparation and then boom, at home for uh, the World War uh, crisis that was starting there. Um, okay, that's that's how it was, uh, it was supposed to happen, obviously. So um, no ayahuasca for me. But I did, uh, in my preparation, met Cambo. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I've been lucky enough to find somebody here in Belgium uh, to help me through this. The most loving woman. It was an abs- absolute, it was perfect uh, experience. And, uh, I, yeah, so that was so powerful and so liberating. Uh, I discovered then the yeah the power can share, of. Uh, can you share about what that experience was like for you and and how it sure. transpired for people who are not familiar with with Cambo? I've I've done Cambo a few times. All right, it's quite an experience. Yeah, so um, it, it was supposed to be a preparation for uh, ayahuasca, so it's a purge for your body and your spirit. So it's all a ceremony around um, that frog, uh, frog, I will call it, I think it's poison, uh, frog poison that is uh, used uh, on little wounds specifically set up on your body, a little uh, burned actually. And uh, then you start to have quite quickly the, the effect of the, of the drug. And it's provoking a massive purge, physic, physical purge. So you have drank two liters of water before, uh, and then you don't have any. Uh, that's why it's important to be very uh, with a very good person with yourself because you can't do anything with your body anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. You are you are just in that purge. There is the, you this swell is the up. only thing. Yeah. The only you thing that's happening, too. yeah, that's true. You have, <laughs> I, I end up with the frog face. I have yeah, epic yeah, yeah. picture of that at the end. But uh, so, but the only thing in the world that's happening at that moment for the next twenty minutes is a purge, and that's oh my god, super intense. So you're swelling up. So uh, that's why it's important not being scared, <laughs> because I can't imagine that uh, you could go with your thoughts into, oh my God, what's happening with me and you're losing control. And so you need to have uh, quite a preparation, mental preparation, I guess. Um, but the environment I was in was so loving that I had no scare at all. I was not scared and it just went through very fast. I fell asleep, I guess, for one hour after that. I woke up super fresh, a little bit uh, yeah. still, uh, my face was a little bit uh, swollen up still but nothing too bad. Um, and the, the first feeling I had, no, two feelings. First, oh my God, I, feel, I felt good and rested, <laughs> very, which was completely the opposite of what I felt, you know, during that purge. And then there was something missing in my body. And I didn't figure out exactly what uh, right away, but on my way back home, I've, I understood that was anxiety, a ball of anxiety that was residing in my solar plexus for years was gone. And then mm. I got my mind blown. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't figure out every, oh, right away that it was missing, found what was missing, but I had, a, I had space. Mm. I had space inside myself, and it was so good, so good. Yeah. It's like being at peace, maybe. Uh, I think that was the first time in my life that I experienced uh, life without anxiety. And that that was, you know, a new purpose in my life was, <laughs> was happening. Like, okay, so I need to get rid of that anxiety because there is a life without anxiety. But that, yeah. that, was, uh, that was important. That was a major step in my journey. How did... Uh people around you like see the transformation like were you were they able to see that transformation like your, your family your friends and like what, what was yeah. their feedback yeah i i embarked uh, my dear friends uh, with me on this journey for years um yeah they, they they are they are between the oh my god you're crazy for the combo story for for example but they also uh impressed by the work I'm doing because they see that uh, I'm, I'm doing 
better and better and better. And uh, they see my commitment to, to get where I'm going. <laughs> uh, they see uh, the energy uh, and, and they see my evolution. They, they, my energy is different. And uh, I don't know, we are, we're, we're growing closer with my, uh, with mm. my dear, dear friends. And it's bring as well new people in the in the in the crew, let's say, and the new people I meet since I feel better and since I'm healing, ah, they're uh, they're they're good people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's that's great. I mean, that's what we can do, right? Is that be that light? You know, it's not like we're trying to convert everyone, but it's like no. kind of show. Uh, we're doing it ourselves to inspire others. Um, so, so you 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 couldn't go to Nepal to have your ayahuasca ceremony. Yeah. Did you cross path with with psychedelics after that? Um, no, and just for my, none of my friends did the Cambo thing. So it's not very like your <laughs> influential person because you do that. It's just they're happy for me, but you know so. I, you know, you need to be a well, and uh, they f they're going to find their own thing, right? I mean, it's not for everyone, too. exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I'm not making advertisement about do this, it's going to change your life. There, yeah, I mean, yeah, every got everybody got his own path, but uh, Cambo and, is, is hardcore, yeah. like, Cam you know, <laughs> like, I, I, it's not something I run toward. It's like, ooh, I'm gonna, you know, go do a Cambo, and, and I don't purge either. So uh, whether it's in ayahuasca ceremonies or, or in Cambo or in we had something called the vomitivo in the jungle where you drink, you keep drinking and drinking and drinking uh, liters of um, uh, lemongrass tea and that oh didn't God. work either. So, um, yeah, no, it's not for everyone. But you know it works. My works with my wife. I mean, she she's done it, and she was a very good student too. And she really purged well. Um, so, yeah, it depends yeah. what we have to purge, I guess. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and how we uh, how we purge. I think everybody's has yeah. different ways to kind of let energy out. Uh, Definitely. It's not not just one way. And yeah, and uh, actually, uh, yeah, I. Um, yeah, we've been stuck, kind of stuck, uh, and my Nepal project couldn't happen. Uh, I don't know when it's going to happen. Um, and so end of 2020, I was still looking for a, I don't know, it was not very active research, you know, because uh, I, I like to have things popping out around me and say, huh, take signs or whatever. And yeah. uh, something else that I was... Um, looking into for years, uh, but didn't have access to a safe access to was uh, micro dosing. Mm. Um, and uh, end of 2020, uh, I found a way to start it in a safe way. And uh, then um, I say, Okay, that's my new thing. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna include that I will not do ayahuasca. I don't know when it's gonna happen. Uh, later, we'll see. Uh, mm. But I will commit myself to start something else uh, through my therapy because I'm into a, uh, a therapy. I mean, I'm into a therapy and uh, I have some, uh, you know, being on a journey like this, I was always looking for some support to, uh, to move forward. Uh, and so um, again, for my anxiety, for uh, mainly my anxiety, actually. So uh, microdosing was, looked like the, the good solution. And as I could uh, try it safely, I, I, I jumped on it. I, um, I started. Um, and yeah, now it's been since early, uh, since the end of 2020, something like that, or yeah. early 2021, that I am in this lifestyle. And uh, things changed a lot around me and inside me again. So <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I... I it's not that only, but everything I do, uh, the yoga, the therapy, uh, developing my, um, my business with this wall and built, uh, you know, no wall anymore. Uh, the, and the psychedelic, everything together makes something very interesting. Yeah. And that's microdosing and magic mushrooms. I'm, I'm assuming. On exactly. Psilocybin. Psilocybin. Yeah. Exactly. Cause I've, I've tried, uh, San Pedro as well. 
uh, Wachuma, uh, which also is, is good uh, to microdose with in certain conditions. I am not, not, I, I not don't know this one. <laughs> it's, I don't it's know a, this it's one. It's a cactus. It's a cactus Ooh, from, I heard uh, about that. The, uh, from Peru. <laughs> um, yes. And so uh, it's an one. But that, I was just asking, you know, what substance it was. And yeah, uh, microdosing, I'm, I'm really curious, how did you feel the impact on like your yoga practice, for example? Um, in the beginning, I felt super tired, which was not in the notice. So uh, I remember calling... Uh, the guy, which is also a, a therapist, say, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> you said that I would, I might be tired for two first week. Uh, it's been a month. I'm tired all the time. I didn't, I didn't want that. And the answer of the guy was so simple and just blew my mind. He said, "Well, maybe you are tired, <laughs> and you need to rest." I'm like, ah, yeah. Psilocybin will connect you, make you closer to your body. So maybe what you feel now, it's you're tired and you need to rest. Maybe you used to yeah. function this way. And this is the signal to tell you that it's not a good functioning for yourself. You need to rest more. How do you sleep? And I was, okay. Okay. I need to sit on this for a while. <laughs> it was very <laughs> unsettling. I said, okay, I, I was not ready for it. And yet I was ready for it. So it was confusing. But yeah, so uh, then I put more intention on everything I was doing with, uh, with psilocybin because uh, I was always asking myself, okay, so how do I feel about doing this? How do how is my body right now? Um, and in actually started the work as a, as of that conversation with the therapist. <laughs> oh, nice. It's funny yeah. that <laughs> if you're sleepy, sleep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, we had the same, th this came up in our teacher yoga teacher training when we were starting to learn meditation. And some people were like, well, I'm meditating, but then I'm falling asleep. And then the, our teacher was like, well, uh, Probably means you need sleep, so <laughs> have some sleep. <laughs> uh, but it's true. I think it's like we're we're sometimes even the sleep we mask with coffee, we mask with you know the the frenzy of of our lives, and it's like if you're tired, this this is a pretty simple solution. Um, yeah, but we forget. I, it, it's the simple thing. I don't know. I, I was always into this. Um, performance thing all the time yeah. even though I, I, I clearly calmed everything since the burnout I was not there yet and yeah the the the, um, the good aspect of psilocybin on me is like I sleep better longer I do not drink alcohol or very exceptionally um but I'm not you know I used to be a a party animal and alcohol was definitely part of my routine um, with not a best relationship gone um, now of course my creativity because I'm more connecting to it myself my the, the creativity in my my work is just it's just back I would say yeah. uh, and uh, that's that's the best feeling because uh, it's like I found a new way and the the methods, the, the design of myself, and uh, I can tune in easy, easily yeah. on it. Yeah, talking about creativity, I think it's, it's such an important part, and it's one of the themes on, on, on my show and, and on the retreat I'm organizing is, uh, like, what, how do you express your creativity? I know you mentioned your work, but, like, what are all the different ways? I'm, I'm curious if that evolved, too, as you were reconnecting with yourself um it's more uh, that's a good question it's definitely in my work because uh in the last year and a half i'm reinventing um reinventing is not very the, the right right word but i dare to uh to get out as myself 100 percent myself so i find I find better ways to uh, to show people who I am, 
what I want to share, what I want to achieve. And so how can I can help them and everything. So it's really into the, uh, the, the creative work is how I can help people and how I can communicate with them uh, yeah. in the best way. So it's, yeah. it's uh, the first thing. Um, being, uh, that's maybe sounds silly, but being more myself, uh, as being more creative, I can feel more at ease to being more myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. that's how I feel at least. Yeah. I'm not sure I can explain the detail of that. Uh, no, that makes sense. <laughs> the, I, okay. I can see it. It's funny because I can also see it. I was looking at your Instagram and mm -hmm. the pictures you have on there and the post, and there's a lot of creativity in there. And, you know, even on how you approach certain subjects or topics and you, you bring yourself in there in those pictures you're creating or, um, and it's sometimes it's simple, but it's, it fits together very well. Um, so I could, I could see that there. That's why I was really curious about, you know, if there was any other outlets, creative outlets, and, you know, sometimes some people when they're younger, uh, child, children, they're, they're creative a certain way. And then when they get older, they disconnect with that and then they reconnect with that. And, and I was just curious if, if you'd gone through a similar. Yeah, uh, but definitely, process. definitely. Because when I, as a kid, I was uh, very creative uh, drawings, um, everything do it yourself. Everything with colors. I was very uh, crafty, <laughs> let's say yeah. this way. And uh, now I, until late, until that, um, yeah, in my 20s, I was still doing this. Uh, I tried everything and just for the sake of playing with colors and uh, materials. Uh, I also had my gardening uh, phase where uh, I grew, I grew uh, vegetables. I, I got a lot of, uh, the moment I can yeah. do something with my hands, I'm very happy. And... Um, yeah now it's now it's all in my um in my uh in my coaching uh yeah. in my coaching uh project now that I'm, I'm i'm putting everything in and i guess in a few months it's going to be something different or i don't know but it evolves a lot wonderful wonderful mm -hmm. are you trying to eventually move to like coaching a hundred percent of your time or is it like what what is your kind of plan i think uh I think there is room for that. And um, there is room for that in the industry I am here. Yeah. Because I got more and more in consult in consultancy. I have more and more requests for coaching as well, uh, coupled with the consultancy, because I basically help companies to uh, transform their way of working and collaborating. And so coaching is just the best tool you can use to make people, you know, transform their way of working and uh, yeah. trespass the whole resistant thing and everything. So I think the two, that's why it's growing kind of organically um, for a few years now, because it's actually required uh, to move forward and the coaching yeah. industry is booming. So uh, I think it naturally is going to grow there and I would be very happy because uh, working yeah. with people is, I think the, the practice that lit me up the most. Yeah, and they're so well connected together. I mean, you can really bring a, a harmony between the the customer experience, the human experience, the coaching. I mean, this is this is all part of the same thing. You know, when you're when you're designing products, it's funny because it it took me a while to realize that that what I was doing is building journeys for people, building experiences, mm -hmm. and what I'm doing with retreats is building journey and experiences for people. What I'm doing when I'm playing music during a ceremony is building, you know, journey and experience for people. And so there's, there's a lot of that to have a lot of, of, of skills. You can, you can move from one to another, but at the end, it's still back to that, that humanity um, and really connecting with your customers too. I mean, like that's, that's the other thing that I feel that you probably gained from, from all your work too. And, and, and I'm curious, like, do you feel like there's, you know, in all the work you've done, the, the, the yoga, the microdosing, the um, uh, EMDR, uh, everything, like has that, has that helped you connect 
with those customers that you're designing experiences for more or like like how how did that evolve over time to make you even better at what you're doing um so these these the things made me closer to myself connected with myself and i understood um then how i could be uh with others And um, as my job more and more is to help people to collaborate together, build stuff together, make sure that they are on the same page, same vision, you know, and also being safe where they are uh, working. Uh, This element of being my real self most of the time and uh, being able to... um, to, to be really compassionate with them because I can be compassionate with myself. That was, that was what was missing with my practice before because before I was really in the methods, like I've been taught this way, so I need to do it this way. Uh, leaving now my, um, my human side being real and out there that makes a, a real connection with the, the other people out there. Otherwise, I was just another consultant bringing some new framework to work with. No, I, I come now uh, as I am uh, with the good and the bad. Uh, yeah. I'm not shying away from anything I am. And people can connect with that for real. So they take me seriously, but they also yeah. enjoy to have that not serious side of myself. And yeah. this connection is everything for my work. And that's why coaching mm. has, has been calling my name. <laughs> yeah. No, this is wonderful. That You did mention earlier there's a point where you weren't calling yourself a coach. And there's a point where you decided to start calling yourself a coach. What do you think helped you transition from, from one to the other? Uh, I, I had a... Uh, so it was a mind work for sure. Um, I don't know. I had a major imposter syndrome yeah, because yeah. Uh, I was that uh, consultant. Uh, my job was easy. You know, I was good. I'm good. Um, everything is easy in that job. It's my comfort zone, actually. I was doing the coaching thing already, but on the side, to only people who reach out for me, that was of the thing. Actually, what happened is the more I connected myself with my uh, connected to myself the more people came to me naturally i got requested so it, it grew on me organically and i actually didn't realize what was happening so i had a major imposter syndrome of that until um i uh, decided to get some coaching for myself <laughs> as well and i've been coached to uh to, okay I'm a coach, but I feel like I'm a fraud. What can I do? Oh my God. And then we started the work. I can help other people with, I, I know I've been through this. I've been through the whole work. <laughs> and at that time it felt like, yeah, actually I'm a coach. I'm helping people. I'm bringing everything that I have to make, to make things happening, to help them to connect to, you know, I'm fully on the job. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a coach and I started yeah. to practice. Hey, do you know I'm a coach? First time felt weird, <laughs> but uh, now I'm just proud to say, yes, I'm a coach and I'm helping my clients and uh, mm. I'm doing a good job and I'm, I am yeah. not done with this. I'm going to develop that more and more. That's beautiful. And, and uh, so when, <laughs> how much, um, so a lot of coaches will go get multiple certifications to coach. Um, I always have kind of love-hate relationships with certifications uh, coming from the tech industry where there's a lot of certifications. Uh, I'm curious, like, how do you see certifications as a coach versus bringing your authentic self where you know you can help people and you you already have a lot of tools? Uh, How do you approach that? Uh Aha. So uh, I'm... (laughs) I'm, um, since I decided I was not following the rules, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm now, I guess, a maverick. And I, I don't want to, I, I love to learn the basics. You know, when I, I decided to go for the yoga teacher training, I took Ashtanga. I wanted to know 
the the roots fine uh, but then it's not the practice I have every day because I tweak it I make it more personal and I just and I think yeah. I do that for everything I like to learn from where it comes where what was the basic thing how did that happen who is the who is the inventor what was the idea behind I, I do a lot of research I study hardcore when I, I started to be uh, curious about something and for coaching I went to uh, my first training was a very uh, classical training where I got the the whole you know by the book thing it was very interesting that's what opened my mind with this and that's the first tools and the first methods I started to use and I respect that uh, a lot. Uh, and then starting um, my coaching journey as a coachee, I discovered different ways. And of course, I'm attracted by people who are also mavericks. <laughs> so I'm, I'm building up my own thing uh, with the time. And what counts is the results, right? So yeah. I, don't have, I don't have certification for CX. For example, the same thing, CX, it grew on me. I started as a, as a project manager, as a product owner uh, in a digital agency. Nobody was talking about CX. I don't need uh, a certification. I've been doing CX since I started. And voilà, at, at one point. I get it. Yeah, voilà. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, I'm doing my whole life this way. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I, I mean, it's kind of the same for me. As, as, uh, you know, and sometimes people need certifications to gain that confidence. Uh, to address that imposter syndrome too, uh, yeah. so you know there's there's a lot of there's room for them, um, but at the same time I'm kind of like you. It's like the only certification I've ever gotten, and it's it was only to prove that I could easily get it. Was uh, back early 2000 was the Project Management uh, Institute certification. Uh, program management and the PMI certification. I was like, you know, like there's all these people getting it. Uh, I was like, I'm just going to show like, you know, I can easily get it. And, you know, I mean, I, I got it, but it's like I, I never even promote it after that mm -hmm. because I'm like, you know, this isn't who I am. Like this is this really just maybe played a tiny little bit of a role. But yeah. I don't know. I'm probably going to have listeners are like no no they're great oh, yeah uh, for yeah, sure for sure and that's cool yeah. if you find all your joy in the certification <laughs> just go with it yeah uh, i'm just saving money for it <laughs> I'm just doing <laughs> well, that's the other thing. <laughs> um well and, and we didn't even talk about psychedelic certifications uh and there's a lot of that happening right now uh, if people want to be a, a psychedelic uh, assisted therapy coach or facilitator um and it's, it's an interesting conversation, too, because there's people that have been working underground for many, many, many years that have experience in that space. Yeah. And um, they don't feel like they need a certification. So it becomes interesting yeah. where legalization of, of that work is dependent on the person having a certification. Uh, which are not regulated. Uh, so there's there's a lot of interesting things there. Uh, yeah. We're coming to an, the end of the show, slowly but surely. Uh, I did want to do something before we end the conversation, which you know I asked for your authorization beforehand. It's it's pulling a card, an oracle card from my earth whoops i'm just showing the tree here uh for people watching this is the earth magic deck and i've mm. been doing this uh, lately uh on the podcast and, and my wife uh trained me on this um i think of it as an experiment uh but it's always a surprising experiment so i love that i i, I love that decks cards i do that a lot it's how <laughs> i train my intuition for years i'm a big fan <laughs> bring it, the it's magic wonderful. <laughs> it bring, all right so is there <laughs> is there a question you'd like me to ask for you or you know i could just ask about your journey um, what should i know about my call to ayahuasca oh there you go that's a really good question <laughs> very timely too um <laughs> Okay, angels and oracles and powers that be. I asked a question for Emily uh, about her journey with ayahuasca and what she should know about her call to ayahuasca. And so I'll start, for people who are listening, I'll start mixing the cards. 
I've got two different methods. The card mixing is the, the, the one that takes a little bit longer. Now really focus on your journey. Ooh, and there's one that came out. Ooh. Ah, that's the one. This this is uh, it shows uh, Ooh, the whale. The whale. Uh, so uh, a whale breaching, the word is breach, so it's a whale kind of breaching out of the water, breaking through uh, its, its beautiful self uh, out of the water. Um, so it's, it's kind of like a big, big breakthrough, big breach. Uh, let me look at the booklet. Uh, Ooh, okay, so there's a little... I'm a big fan of that. I'm just excited to hear about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll send you this after the, the show as Yay. well. Um, so, uh, this powerful creature of the ocean takes a few great sweeps with his fins and propels himself briefly out of the waters where he spends the majority of his life. Now, I don't know why they made him a male, uh, because I, I could think, uh, you know, in français, it's be la, la baleine. Uh, he's taking a, a break from the ordinary earth element in which he lives to exist even for a few moments in the realm of blue skies and sun. Having broken through the skin of the ocean in a magnificent display of fullness and strength, all baleen whales breach, but none more spectacularly than the humpback whales. Considered the acrobats of this family. They arch, stretch, and twist their bodies even as they approach the surface of the water in what may be an ancient mating ritual, a form of communication, or even a way to remove parasites. Uh, I'll, I'll just go straight to <laughs> the conclusion here <laughs> uh, because it keeps going for a while. Um, it, it is time to take a break, not just a coffee break, but a respite from the usual environment you find yourself in. That trip you wanted to take, go for it. Tired of being indoors? Make it a point to get outside. You have become so attached to your surroundings that you have created within them an illusion of safety. Yet, it is not these things that make you feel safe. Rather, the familiarity you have imbued in your surroundings have generated this false sense of security. Taking time away from the familiar is literally about changing your external environment in a significant way, such as doing something unusual, maybe ayahuasca, or perhaps <laughs> something you have always wanted to experience, maybe ayahuasca. Maybe. <laughs> Another perspective is breaking through the barrier of beliefs that have constricted you in any way from being who you truly are. This is your opportunity to do some intentional breaching of these thought patterns, which will open you to different worlds and perspectives. Wow. Wow, now, what right? Do you, what do you think about that? <laughs> I love that. Okay, so the message is clear for me. <laughs> I should not put that call on the side. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen, and that's going to be a breach. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm excited again. You know, I put that thing on the side because I'm busy with a lot of other stuff. And I'm like, seriously, this is, uh, that's why I love cards. <laughs> yeah. It's talking, it's talking to your intuition. It's talking in my, my, uh, in my core to my core. And I love that. <laughs> yeah. No, it feels, it feels like it connected with of a lot of what we discussed as yeah, well. Yeah. The wall it's, and built as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it almost like confirms it's validation for the journey you've already been on. And it's also saying it's not over yet. And, and there's a lot more to, um, to breach through. Yeah. I guess. And, and, and that's why it's the best journey ever to start because it's never, there is no end to it. So yeah, you, you can't get bored. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good message because I think a lot of people, are like, well, I'm going to go do this and this and I'll be done, right? Uh, I'm like, nope. well, no, that, that kind of, Probably it's part not. of being human. <laughs> yeah. Um, good. Well, um, were there any other questions or, or subjects you wanted to cover or questions for me? Oh, my God. Where do you go with this uh, great project? Now, did you have leadership at Delix, uh running and everything? Where do you go with it? 
Uh, well, there's there's a few things uh, that I, I go. It's kind of funny because it's always evolving. Uh, but one of the things I'm focused on is is collaboration with others on organizing uh, retreats uh, that are uh, around plant medicine and creativity. Uh, so you know, I'm I'm doing it under my personal brand or, or kind of my own name, and and uh, I've got one coming up in October. Uh, but those are like I'm trying to do like very few a year, maybe one to two and doing it like very well and focused. Um, and so that's that's one thing. Another thing I'm actually just about to start is is journey coaching and consulting. So it's actually um, kind of, of uh, coaching people through their personal journey and and also helping companies who are creating journeys whether it's product journeys or or retreat centers creating journeys for their guests uh and this is something i'm i'm just uh starting like this is like fresh hot off the press so uh you know and and some of it is i I haven't figured everything out uh some of it is having faith in the path and where it leads and just like you is um putting my authentic self out there um i love playing music creating um so sharing some of that and and i get to meet awesome people um i'm trying to actually do less zoom calls if i can though it'd be hard to meet in person since you're so far away uh, but like when I can is like actually now start traveling uh, places or, you know, I'm going to go to Peru in a few weeks to, awesome. well, by the time this airs, it will be after that. But in a, in a few weeks to go interview uh, a few people down there. Uh, and then last week I was in Sedona and I was interviewing a, a few people. Uh, and it's it's crazy when you kind of, it's going to sound cheesy, but when you answer the call of the universe, the serendipitous things that happen, the connections that, you know, never happened before start happening. Uh, and it's really, it's really encouraging. So that's, uh, that's where I take it. This is all very exciting. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm always open to collaborations as well. You know, it, it's I don't. It's kind of funny because when you put yourself out there, especially in social media, you have to balance um, humility, creativity, your ego, but you also need to be kind of open to working with others. And and so I'm always looking for my tribe or people where I'm like, oh wow, like if we get together uh that you know it's cheesy but that, that synergy that one plus one equals like 10. Uh, oh yeah but i truly believe it's true yeah, <laughs> truly me too believe me it's too true. yeah um, so that's that's the type of collaborations uh it's it, it, effortless collaborations where mm. you can basically bring your whole self uh and and work hard for it but it's it feels effortless because it feels very natural so I'm, I'm really looking for that type of collaborations that, you know, also generate income as well, because, you know, we do live in a material world. Um, and, and, you know, that's why things like retreats are helpful because they do generate income when the, the podcast doesn't generate any income mm -hmm. uh, yet. And I don't know if I see it as something that will ever generate income um, because I don't know how I feel about sponsorships and, and things that would generate income, but who knows, you know, we'll see. Who knows? We don't know where yeah. it goes anyway. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank Anything you very else? much. Yeah. Uh, right now, uh, right now, no, but, uh, I'm very curious no. to follow up that adventure you're on. So definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I can, uh, yeah, we can talk a little bit more after the, the recording is done. So great. Well, Emily. Uh, thank you so much for spending the time so late in your day uh, to connect together. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me. And uh, it was uh, 
very nice. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please subscribe to it on Apple Podcasts. Follow me on Instagram at Leadership Adelix, or stop by my website and say hi at fuyat.com. That's F O O Y A D. There's a lot going on. I've got a retreat coming up in October. I've got Flute Fridays, and I'd love to hear from you all, the listeners that tune in every week. And and if you have suggestions for future guests, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm there, and uh, I'd love to get more guests on the show. Thank you. Have a great day.